Namaste. Welcome to this uh, relaxation video short. So today we're going to explore legs up the wall. It's a great thing to do if you've spent a lot of time on your feet during the day, um, or if you've done a practice of yoga that's very standing based or leg based. Um, so we are going to practice with the wall, but you can do this with a chair or a sofa or a bed if you don't have a wall to hand um, that your mat can go against. And if you would like to do it in bed, you can. So if you're a chair yogi, you might try that variation. I'm going to use also a bolster here and a block. Um, it's quite a bricky block, but those are optional extras. So I'll show you how to use them, but you don't have to use them if you don't want to. So we're going to start by getting ourselves into legs up the wall position. So Vipariti Karani or Karini is what it's called in Sanskrit. Um, it doesn't have a direct English translation. We just call it legs up the wall. Um, it's actually a mudra, a gesture of the body rather than a yoga pose. So you want to get yourself as close to the wall as possible towards one side of your mat. So you're going to lay down into the middle of the mat. And if you can, as close so that you get your shoulder that's nearest the wall, just moved out of the way forward. And then just sliding the hand that's away from the wall down as you gently lower the torso to the floor and the legs up the wall. And I can inch myself in a little bit so that I end up with my buttocks against the wall and my legs extended. But if it doesn't suit you to have the legs stretched in this way, you can move yourself as far away from the wall or bend your knees as much as you need to. There's no right alignment here. It's just whatever suits your body the best. So once you get into this pose, spend a few minutes arriving here. So allowing the back of the head to be heavy, the shoulders and the backs of the arms, if they're out to the side, to find heaviness into the floor and feeling all of the parts of the back of the body that are in contact with your mat or your support. So all of those parts of the body have perhaps been holding you upright during the day or during your, your yoga practice, and now they can soften, they can begin to relax. One of the key benefits of this pose is actually enhancing the relaxation response. So it enhances the actions of the parasympathetic nervous system and creates uh, an opportunity for us to breathe deeply and in a relaxed way, a very deep belly breath as well. So if you're in the pose and it feels like you're fighting it or you don't feel relaxed in it, perhaps choose a different pose for your relaxation. If you're quite happy here, if this might be as far as you wish to go. If you're working in bed, you can use pillows underneath your body instead of the supports that I will use just now. If you'd like to try, you can bring your block, and which might be a sturdy book, place the soles of your feet on the floor. And just as if you were doing bridge pose, peel your hips up enough to place that block down underneath the back of your pelvis. And we're looking for the bony bits of the pelvis, not the soft bits up towards the waist and not the buttocks. And then lengthen your legs again. And you'll find that the weight of the body is now much more into the upper back and shoulders, maybe a little bit more in the back of the head, but it shouldn't feel bad in your neck. And keeping your head centered here, try not to move your head from side to side. Allow your toes to be softened. You can bend your elbows and place your hands on your abdomen if that feels good to you. Or you might choose to have the arms resting out to the side, or you might choose to have the arms further up towards the head. Wherever they are, make sure that the shoulders, elbows, and hands are supported by something. So it doesn't matter which of these you choose. When you get into this position, spend a few minutes here if you can. Five, three to five is nice for uh, relaxation, for the effects to become apparent. 
And for us to spend the time here, we want the body to be softened, the forehead softening, the space across the eyes, the jaw, the shoulders and chest. Feel the weight of the legs coming into the pelvis, easing the back of the hips down onto that block or cushion. And with the body softening, the toes nice and relaxed, giving them a wiggle if they need it. And moving your awareness to your breath and just taking some long, deep breaths without forcing quiet, deep breaths if possible. If you don't want to time yourself, but you want to have an idea of how long you've spent in a pose, five long deep breaths for most beginning to average students is about a minute. If you are more practiced and your breath is longer and slower, it might be one to three deep breaths per minute. There's no need to force your breath to be slower. It comes with practice and with time, quite naturally. The important thing is to keep your face relaxed and your shoulders and breath soft so that you can allow the body to soften even deeper in this posture. After your next exhalation, we're just going to move the body back down towards the mat. So softening the knees to place the feet on the floor, up on the wall, sorry, and then peeling the hips up enough to gently move your block or cushion out from underneath the back of the body and return the back down, lengthening the legs again. And just feeling the effect of that. So if you've had your body resting on something firm, you might feel like a strange sensation of warmth and coolness as that spreads from that area across the back of the body. It's just a nice release. You can continue to hold this um, posture for the remainder of your relaxation time or you can come down now into a full Shavasana or other pose of your choice. If you've done an awful lot of work with your uh, low body and sometimes having a breath through the feet um, is a nice thing to do here. So as you lie and legs up the wall, focus on moving the breath in and out through the body out of the body, sorry, through the soles of the feet. Feeling a light flutter of coolness across the insteps as you breathe in. 
and a gentle warmth across the center of the foot as you breathe out. When you feel ready, you begin to bring a bit of movement back to your hands and your feet, your wrists and your ankles. Bending your knees into your chest, just easing perhaps the head a little bit side to side. If you're very close to the wall, you might like to inch yourself away. If you're on a bed, you might like to roll to one side and come up and sitting. Um, and if you're using the wall, just rolling to one side, checking for, for things around you, making sure you're safe as you come up into a seated position. So this is a very relaxing way to do legs up the wall, to use it as an alternative posture for your relaxation at the end of class or at the end of your day. Um, and in the next video, I will show you how to use the bolster. Uh, so thank you for joining me in this practice. I hope you watch the next one as well. Namaste.